this morning I'm going to paint the bilge um, using the same paint that I've been using on the deck and the hull, just hard top AX. Um, I'm going to paint it white to be nice and bright. I'll see rust stains and stuff like that as well. So um, I want to paint it before I kind of go in and put all the floor down properly so that I know I've got a good coating everywhere and that everything's sound before I, before I seal it all up. So um, yeah. <laughs> Like, it'd be fine if it was... So this is actually called a joggle stick, which is, is also known as, as a spiling stick. Um, and what this does is it helps you basically mark out the shape of, say, a bulkhead or any kind of awkward shape. So what I've got here is I've got a straight edge. So this was originally going to be my floor, um, but I've cut, a, I've cut a, a bit off of it um, so that I can use it for a template instead because I want to use a thicker piece of timber or a thicker piece of plywood. So Basically, you lay down the straight edge where it's going to be in its final place. So this is exactly 280 mil from the center line, or what I've marked as the center line, um, all the way up. So what I'll do is I'm going to put this down, say here, measure the corner up here, and then profile it all the way down, and mark on the template the shape of this stick. So when I put it onto the final piece of ply, I'll have an exact... Um, copy of the profile. It's hard to explain unless I actually show you, so I'm just going to show you. So the basic method is um, you take the spiling stick and you put it on your template that you've, you've um, lined up with where the final edge will be on your final piece. And I want this, um, I want the floor to actually be spaced off any metal, so I'm just going to put a spacer in so I know that it's an equal distance all the way around. And then I'm going to put um, points, so I know that I want it to be here. So I'm going to mark the shape like this. So I know that when it comes to actually marking this out in the final piece, I'll line this edge up with the final edge on the piece of ply that will be finished, the finishing ply. And then I'll put this down on here like this, with this on top of the ply. And then I'll be able to mark my point on the ply. So if I do that all the way along this, so if I put a point, say every six, eight, or even 12 inches apart, I'll know exactly the, the profile of that point, um, or of this part. And that's the basic principle of a spiling stick. So I have a nice heavy piece of 18mm ply, which I think will do a lot uh, a better job than the 12mm for the floor. And I've put my template that we made on the boat um, down against that with the nice straight edge against the straight edge of the new stuff and the back edge as well. So those two edges are 90 degrees. Um, so basically what I can do now is I can lay my joggle stick down all the way along and I can mark my points. So I have a nice point here that I can put a little cross there and then I'll join those dots out and then join them together with a jigsaw. And that should then see that side of the floor done, hopefully. So you can see my point there, there's another one there, and then they go all the way back up to there. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll find a way of joining those kind of nice and fair. For some reason they kind of go, they sweep up and then they kick back a bit and then go straight. So I think the plating of the hull um, probably comes pretty straight and then bends in there. So that's why you have to kind of do something like this because it's so, uh, it's such an awkward shape and everything so all over the place. But um, yeah, so basically I can join that. It's pretty straight here. Sorry, it's pretty straight here. 
and then it bends in and then it comes back flat. Hmm. And that's the panel cut out. Um, the circuit I saw was able to just get around it, but um, my jigsaw broke. But anyway, the that's, that's the starboard side, so it should be very, very similar on the port side. Um, and what's going to happen actually is I'm going to paint this now uh, just to seal it. And then when I get down to the bows, I'm going to have to cut the, the slots for the ribs and probably kind of joggle it a bit more just to get it in right. Um, but this will never be visible, so it's not a huge deal as long as it doesn't touch the hull. Um, so, yeah, it's okay. I'm going to paint it now, and then when, when I do cut out the slots, I'll paint those slots then later. But I just want to get all of this sealed as quick as I can. So now that I have these two panels cut, um, I'm running out of time today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to coat them with, um, with paint, and then I'm going to leave them to dry and come up during the week after work and give them more coats. Um, so this is actually Joe's Mastic 90 base, so it's got no color in it. I'm curious to see what happens because it's technically a paint, but it's just a clear paint. Um, and I can't see why it wouldn't work. It's a lot cheaper than using a two pack varnish and like it seals metal pretty well, so I can't see why it wouldn't seal wood. So it'll be a good experiment. Yeah, it's uh, starting to get cold in Ireland. Uh, it's five degrees at the moment. It's about 10 o'clock at night, so it's gonna get colder tonight, but um, yeah, I think I start feeling the cold around four or five degrees. We actually moved the boat today as well. So I've got a new, a new berth. Uh, I've got my own pontoon to do work on, which is pretty sweet too. Um, she was over here, but we moved it over here. Um, it's just better and I can also tie her off from the other side so that when we get strong easterlies she won't heal as much. She heals quite a bit at the moment because of the under ballasted kind of situation but uh, yeah, she's looking pretty good. We finished painting the floor timbers. Um, they're actually been bolted in now, and you can see all the way along the edges here, they've been um, sealed with Seagaflex and bolted in uh, with, with bolts either end. So once these are kind of fully set, they'll never move again, I'd say. Next job is to put the flooring in. So these are the floor timbers that I made up in the garage. Um, all I need to do now is make them fit, basically. So they need to, they need to work their way around the, um, the stringers. So uh, I've got to do that next. And then what I'll do then is I'll give them a good sanding and another coat of uh, sealant on them. So they'll be really nicely sealed um, and in for life, hopefully. really happy with the way this floor is turning out. Um, we've got the 
kind of main structure on the outside fitted mostly. Um, I've kind of had to rouse around the stringers, so I used a router to get around the stringers um, to kind of and made little pockets on the other side just so I could um, fit them up against near the hull. So there's still a space next to the timber, to, so it's not really up against the hull, which is ideal because what you don't want is the floor to move relative to the hull, damage the coating, and then you'll start getting rust. So that was one of my main fears, but um, yeah, that should be fine. I'm not quite finished. Um, I still need to make this piece, which will probably slot in around the pole here. I was originally gonna do it in two pieces that slotted together, but I actually can't do that because it'll just be too saggy here. Um, so I'll fit, I'll fit that bit next as well, but um, I also need to sand these floors really well again and give them one more coat of paint. Um, I'm not gonna do that just yet though, because I've got a few other jobs that I wanna do in the build first before I finish them. Um, so yeah, this has turned out really well, and it means that I've got proper access to the bilge so I can lift this section of the floor up this section of the floor can come up and there's the tank underneath there um, and I'll also have this section of the floor removable too so there'll probably be a bilge pump in here and kind of some storage for um, different things but uh, yeah that's going to be a really nice bilge now this bilge hopefully will be quite dry a lot of the time because all of my tankage will be beyond um, so back back further beyond the halfway point all my tankage is going to be back there um, so if I've got water in here, it means there's a serious problem or one of the hoses kind of up in the galley or something is leaking and it's making its way forward. So I'm hoping that this place will be dry a lot of the time. But that said, I will, I will put a bilge pump in here with a, with a float switch. So if there's a real serious problem, I'm not here and there's water coming in everywhere and it's getting into this bilge, at least I know that it, it'll keep her from, from sinking. But um, yeah, I'm going to keep going, but I'm pretty happy with it. Um, as I was saying, the reason I didn't use the 12 mil is because it was too light, so I'm using 18 mil, and it's really, really um, sturdy, and there's no, there's no spring in it at all, so I'm really happy with that. So just before I finish up this video, um, I want to show you something really cool. So I'm going to pop an image up on your screen now, and you'll be able to see um, in the foreground there, there is a green yacht, and there is a red yacht. So. This picture was taken around 1998, as far as I know. Um, but in the foreground, you, you might recognize the boat in the foreground from some of my other videos where I actually crossed the Atlantic on that video with Errol. Um, it's the boat I actually learned to sail on in Soft 2, and the first yacht I was ever on. So um, it's cool to see an old picture of her. Um, but in the background, which is kind of cool, is uh, you can see a red boat, and it's surrounded by fire engines. Now. If you've watched the videos from earlier on, and I've mentioned it a few times as well in the more recent videos, but you'll know that Zara had a really bad fire around 1998. So if you put two and two together, you see a red boat and fire engines. That's actually Zara, um, the day she was burnt. And you can see she's, she's looking pretty cool. Um, laying a little bit lower in the water, I'd say, than, than normal, because she's probably full of water and stuff from the fire engines. But um, yeah, it's pretty cool to have a, a little piece of history and to kind of tie things up. And with that, I'm going to wrap up this video. We pretty much got the floor in the saloon finished. Um, going to move on to bulkheads now. So once the bulkheads are in then, and all the battens are done, um, a little bit of hot work to do on deck. Like I've got to make a hard dodger. I've got to put the ventilation in and stuff like that, wiring feeds, things like that through the deck um, before I can do the insulation. But we're definitely making progress. I felt like I was stuck in the saloon for ages trying to figure that floor out. but. Um, Pretty, pretty happy with the way it looks now. So with that, I will leave you go and I will see you in the next video.